What's up, guys? Welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. I'm, as always, your host, Cam Williamson. Um, we're a little crooked on YouTube, but that's okay. Uh, we'll be a little crooked today. It's, um, no. No, we won't. There. Looks crazy. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. So, we are here in the new Road to Redemption, the official Road to Redemption podcast studio. Um, it's great to be here. I missed you guys. I missed you guys last week. Um, excuse me. It's been strange. This whole thing kind of came out of nowhere. Um, as far as how did this all happen? How did it come to be? Um, you guys know I was working at a corporate job at the beginning of the quarantine and everything like that. I lost that job um, kind of intentionally, if we're being honest. I made the cannabis documentary knowing that it was going to piss people off. I knew what they would assume. I knew that our corporate office was watching us a lot. Um, and by corporate office, it was just a micromanaging manager that worked in the building, not corporate. Um I knew they were watching, and I knew that they didn't like me. I wasn't uh, fitting their clicky type thing that they were doing. So I just, no one ever spoke to me. Um, no one ever had me do my job. They just treated me like a secretary. So, and if I'm talking a little bit slower, guys, it's, I do have a little bit of latency coming through my headphones. So I hope it's not too weird, but it's kind of weird to me. Anyway, <clears throat> um, anywho, so I felt that things were starting to go a little sour there at that corporate job which it was my first corporate job um i started to immediately feel connections to other content creators and it kind of just so happened that i started to watch a lot of them talking about getting fired from their corporate job and that was kind of the change for them where um it it's kind of the same story you know as mine is they lost that corporate job, thought they were going to lose everything. I mean, guys, I spent days um, worried, genuinely worried, because when I got that job, that was the best money I had made in a really long time, a really long time. Um, and it was the first time that my family and I were stable financially. You know, we were good. We didn't have to worry about stuff. And then I me being who I am, I intentionally throw this fireball onto it because I'm unhappy. Uh, and then I get fired. <laughs> and then my wife and I have to talk, you know, and go, damn, everything I've been doing, all this content creation. And remember, because of the new job, I had just bought like a new camera and stuff like that. Um, yeah, we invested in planning on continuing to have that money. So we had to talk and we were like, man, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do this because we still have the same amount of bills and now we have half the income. So at first things were very heavy, you know, very, very heavy. Um, I, I immediately, as a father, felt like a failure and I was like, oh my God, what did I do? Um while you know i i knew what was going to happen when i made the video i didn't expect for it to feel like such a failure when it actually happened right so when i got fired i was like oh my god i actually got fired like i i planned to get fired but when it actually happened i was like fuck man that really does take the money away like it's not just hypothetically taking the money away from my future and my family it, it did so now i'm here anywho so we talk a couple days go by where i'm just heartbroken you know i i think i'm gonna have to dissolve the podcast um just sell the camera sell the mic sell everything uh just i i had to do anything possible i was willing to go and um serve tables again i was gonna go try to get a job at texas roadhouse because that's um, one of the last serving jobs I had that I was really good at. Um, and I, I was I was confident that I could get hired, at least being a waiter. And they make pretty good money on the weekends. So I know that at least that income would have balanced us out, right? So those couple of days, I, I, I get this really intense feeling. Like, just don't force anything, you know? Don't, I'm not saying don't try, but just don't force anything. So I sit back and... 
I I just get this feeling. This weird feeling like if you reassess some things, just look at yourself, look at your lifestyle and look at your numbers again. Do it again. So we sat down and we looked at everything and somehow we missed a few things and we were like, "Oh no, we we don't have that." And well, if we move this here and and we take that off, well, look at that, you know, oh my gosh, our situation's completely different. And then we start talking about, well, you know, okay, maybe it's time for a bigger house, something like that. We've got now my daughter's getting older. My oldest daughter um, stays with us and she's getting older, so she needs her own space. And the podcast, I mean, takes up a lot of room. Everything you guys see in this video um, from the studio, it's literally been crammed into my house and into my kids rooms so we're like okay we could get a storage unit right we could just get a regular storage unit that you know store all your stuff and you're looking at the prices of those things and they're about the same is just paying rent on a thing so that's what we did um and now this is my job and it's what I do so this is a place where people can come and I can take pictures for them uh, photography I have a thing going right now where the whole city of Clarksville you can come and you, uh, you and your family free family portraits um, I'm offering the whole city it's three digital portraits you come in I've got a black backdrop over here we'll have a couple different options you come in three pictures you leave um, and they'll leave with a coupon for another free session for another time and um, yeah so that's how we're starting it again I will be accepting I'm not going to go out and be salesy or anything but um, it's here I am telling people and I am putting it out on social media that this spot is here so people can come to me for photography videography social media marketing branding um, if you want to start a podcast if you want to whatever uh, you can start your own show here you can use all the gear we'll switch out the backdrops whatever um, yeah just making this a space for creators and you know it's not a business I don't want anything from anyone um, but you know if if there's things out there in situations where people need photographers videographers whatever we'll talk no problem so i'm very excited I'm very very excited for this place it's um you know my wife's amazing my wife's one of those people that she hides in the background all the time but without her none of this is possible you know um yeah i'm a i'm a youtuber man <laughs> that doesn't come with a whole lot of money so uh yeah it, it's pretty cool it's pretty cool to get to see the evolution of all this and it's really been wild to see my wife and I's relationship evolved through it because we are uh, we got married in 2017 it's now 2020 so this year we'll be married 18 19 20 years three um, three years this year in October and we're kind of at that stage now where it's like life is real you know you're not in the honeymoon stage anymore at three years but you're not quite at five either where I don't know. I don't know. We were both married once, so we've been through those weird stages where now we really didn't deal with that the first time because we were like, hey, cut the shit. I'm not trying to do all this. We're not going to like each other all the time. We already know that. But my wife and I, I think because of our raw honesty, we don't really deal with that. You know, um, I there's no place that I don't want my wife. Like some people have joked that this is my main cave, but she has the nicest office up front you know like sh this is her space too so it's I'm very lucky I'm very very lucky because I understand that a lot of people don't have that kind of support and um, without that none of this happens so round of applause um, show of gratitude for my wife um, I wanted to talk about a few things uh, just things that have been kind of irking me I haven't been able to follow along I've been literally just stuck in this place for the last week but I know there's a few cases out there um, that I haven't commented on or talked about I know there's a young female soldier that went missing I don't uh, Gabri Gabriella something I, I don't know the story on that that's why I haven't 
commented on it. I just don't know no know enough about it. Um, yeah, so I don't like to talk about things that I don't feel like I'm qualified to talk about. And at this time, I don't know enough about that one. The other one is the young kid, the young black kid. Um, they keep, I keep seeing the dialogue of right before he got killed. That's terrible. Um, that seemed like there was something else at play, right? That was the video was back in 2019, and he was wearing a face mask for some reason in the middle of the summer. It was weird. So that one, again, I don't know enough about. I, I just simply don't know enough, enough about that one. Um, what I did want to talk about is just who are we listening to, right? Who are you guys listening to? This whole Chris D'Elia thing happened, and I'm going to take these off. Um, the whole Chris D'Elia thing happened, and when, when D'Elia stuff started, I immediately – told everyone like hey pump the brakes and just so everyone knows who watched my idea that his thing was a PR stunt I understand that was crazy I get that it was crazy that's why I, I said it because it was just a cling to some hope you know it I was clinging to any kind of hope that it would not be true um, with that with the Chris D'Elia whole update thing I think we're at a place where everyone can kind of admit that Chris D'Elia was at one point, I don't think so much anymore, but I think at one point we can all admit that Chris D'Elia was kind of creepy or overly aggressive or even, you know, whatever, just kind of douchey to women. But I don't f think you can call him a pedophile or even grooming at this point because everything that's come out especially now like chris's team put it out to the original simone lady um where he was saying whatever he was saying right he she says i'm 16 he goes shit too young bye ends the conversation she comes back in 2019 and goes hey i'm i'm 21 now down to fuck dtf and he ghosted her because now he's grown and probably is much more successful and has plenty of other options so again chris delia not a good guy as far as his tactics to pick up women but he's not a pedophile now his career is over his agency dropped him um Netflix still has his stuff up. I think Workaholic said they got rid of the episode with him in it where he also played a pedoph pedophile. Um, I don't think you took his episodes off. It's a kind of key point to the story. Um, I know the main actor of you came out and was like, this is disgusting, whatever. I don't like it when Hollywood does that. I really don't. I wish Hollywood would shut up because guess what? Those bright hot lights could be turned right on you very very quickly very quickly so i i just i encourage people shut your mouth uh, especially you know i my show is literally called the road to redemption i put my shit out here i have never sexually uh, harassed assaulted anything anyone that's never been my style I, hell, I'm not even a dude to, that was ever like a jump in your DMs guy. Now, when I was in the dating game, we didn't really have DMs, I, I don't think. Um, it would have been like MySpace and Facebook and back then. Uh, yeah, so I guess you had direct message. But not, it, it's not like an Instagram or Snapchat where motherfuckers are going crazy in there, you know? Um, yeah, I... I I just wish people would not judge so much. My show is called The Road to Redemption because I like to put my dirty laundry out there so people can learn from them uh, and and go, oh, okay, that's one way to see life. And if I'm ever presented with a similar situation, even if it's not completely the same, but a similar one, okay, now I have a different tool in my arsenal to think about that one. But if you're just watching garbage Hollywood highlights all day and assuming that now Chris D'Elia is this, you know, pedophile, grooming young girls, whatever he was accused of, like, that 
none of that came out to be true. It looks suspect as shit from the beginning. But we, we, everybody, not me, I like to believe I'm one of the level-headed people where I go, okay, you got to wait. You got to wait till it comes out because there's a real chance that this could be true. There is some probable cause to believe that there's at least a reason to listen here right she's not just some person with 140 characters on twitter firing off she has something that needs to be looked into they looked into it now it took too long what the hell took so long you're literally being accused of being a pedophile And the first thing on your Twitter feed says, I will never apologize for any of the jokes I make or feel bad about them or whatever. And then the next thing right under that, it says, I fucking love this kid so much. And it's like, what? And that, that was the biggest reason why I was like, is this a conspiracy thing? Like, that just seems too orchestrated. And then they try to go after Rogan because um, Rogan laughed at a Joey Diaz story where, I mean, Joey Diaz has been, again, very honest about his past. I just find this cancel culture thing interesting. Very interesting where people who have never done shit want to cancel somebody. I think you should have to have done something and especially done what the person has done the right way before you get to say shit about whatever. Now, if you are a victim, say that, but come with proof because guess what? This whole court of public opinion thing has got to stop. Chris D'Elia coming out as a dirtbag to women in his younger life, forgivable. Forgivable, right? Not, I'm not saying I want him to date my sister, but it's forgivable. Him being a pedophile who grooms young women, 1,000% would never be forgivable. But the court of public opinion painted him that way. So now, somebody who literally tried his ass off, made a great career for himself... Now has to do what? We don't know because it's taking them so damn long. Chris isn't putting out podcasts. He hasn't released a tweet. Nothing. I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I want to leave you guys with positive stuff. Right? I want to give you some stuff to think about. Uh, the song Bloody Valentine by my Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, my dude. That song is blowing my world up right now. There's another one right now by our boy. Um, certified Will, uh, Will E. He's uh, sponsored by Sauce Unlimited right now. He just put out a song. I'm going to try to get the MP3 for it so I can play it at the end of this. If not, uh, if I can't do it for that, check it out on iTunes. It's called Saucy, S A U C Y, um, by Will E. And uh, a great song. I will have a drum set in here and I will be doing a drum cover video to that very, very soon. So we should have the MP3 for that, but I can't guarantee. I want to get this up by tonight. I can't guarantee that he's going to have the MP3 sent over by then. So I love you guys. Please um, thumbs up. Share this with everybody. We got the we got the studio now, so please, if you guys have guests that you want to see, especially around the Clarksville area where I can bring them here into the studio, that'd be cool. Um, thumbs up, subscribe, share it with your friends. I love you guys so much. Thank you for everything. All your support made this happen. Love you. Couldn't thank you enough. Bye.